So, from the current price of 111.50, if this stock just starts to move up from here, based on P.E. ratios, we could see it going up to $165.41. Hey guys, today we're going to be going into the stock analysis for Arrow Electronics Inc. Um, they are a one star. You know, I usually do my stocks on my watch list in three tiers. Three star most fundamentally sound, two stars beneath that, and one star least. And you'll see why I rate this the least of the three when we go into it. In any event, they are currently $111.93 a share. And Yahoo analysts estimate they can go up to $129.50 a share. And when we jump into the analysis, you'll see what my estimates are that they can go up to based on P-E ratio. In any event, guys, I also do a This Week Stock Winners that I release every week letting you know which fundamentally sound stocks are on our watch list and to watch out for in terms of them moving up in the next few weeks. And also, this week's option picks, where when we go through this week's stock winners, there may be one stock on there that's so compelling that we choose it for an option pick. I keep saying we, I should be saying I. And um, as we know, with options, percentages are much better. You can make maybe 2 or 3% on a stock as it moves up from day to day if it's moving up well. You may make 20 or 30% on an option in around that same time period. So you want to check out this week's option picks as well. In any event, let's jump over to our stock and do the analysis on it. Okay, so Arrow Electronics, ticker symbol ARW. We don't have the 2023 figures for this company yet because we know it's February 23rd of 2024. But the 2023 figures have not come out yet. But I'm going to provide you with the figures for 2018 through 2022. So, we see that the low price for our electronics in 2018 was 63.25. The high price was 86.94. That was for an increase of 37.45% throughout the year. It seems throughout the five years, it stays in that range, except for the COVID year. 2019, the low price was 62.66. High price was 86.10 for an increase of 37.41%. But in 2020, that was the year of COVID lockdowns. The low price dropped to 41.06. That was lower than the prior two years, and it increased to 99.20. That was higher than the previous two years. So it actually increased that year by 141.60%. Then we have 2021, the low price was 97.62. So actually in 2020, the high price was $99.20 and the low price was just a couple of dollars under that for the next year, $97.62. It increased to $136.08. That's an increase of 39.40%. And in 2022, it was 91.63%. It increased to 136.5%. That's an 
that was an increase of 48.48% over the year. So let's take a look and see where this company can go now. We see that the low PEs over the last five years in 2018, it was 7.81. 2019, they actually lost money. And we'll see more about that when we get to the income statement. But their earnings per share was negative 2.44. In 2020, their low PE was 5.53. 2021, 6.46 and 2022, 4.20. Now, why do I like to look at the low PEs and the high PEs? Because if I look at the low PEs and the high PEs for the last five years, that can give me the probabilities of where that stock's price could fall to and how high that stock's price can go up to. So let's take a look at that right now. Okay, so currently the price is at $111.50. Earnings per share is 17.96. P.E. is 6.21. But let's say that the P.E. was to drop to the lowest P.E. in these last five years. That would be, not counting 2019 where it was negative. That would be 4.20 in 2022. We're going to say 4.20 times the earnings per share, 17.96 equals 75.43. So there's a possibility based on the previous lowest PE in the last five years that this stock could fall to $75.43. However, we see in 2018 it was 7.81. It didn't drop any further. In 2020, it was 5.43, but in 2021, it was 6.46. So two of the last five years, the low PE was actually higher than this current PE, which means it's very possible that this stock can stop right here and then start moving up. Time will tell. So it can continue to go down a little, or it can just start moving up. That's where our candlestick chart comes in. We use this kind of fundamental analysis to know what to buy, and then we use our candlestick charts to know when to buy them. So now that we've seen how far this stock can fall, let's assume that this is the lowest. 6.21 PE, and then it starts moving back up. And let's see, based on PE ratio, how high we feel this stock could move back up. So I'm going to start looking from the low PEs to the high PEs. I'm not counting the numbers after the decimals, just before to make it simpler. We see from the low PE to the high PE, from 7 to 10, so there's a difference of 3. Not counting this one because it's negative. Here's a difference of 8. Here's a difference of 3. And here's a difference of 2. That's not looking good. So I'm just going to say 3. If I do the current PE, 6.21 Oh, I'm sorry. 6.21 plus 3 
9.21 times the earnings per share times 17.96 equals 165.41. So, from the current price of 111.50, if this stock just starts to move up from here, based on P.E. ratios, we could see it going up to $165.41. So now let's jump into the fundamentals of the company we're going to go down to the income sheet or the income statement and we see in 2018 they made 29 billion 676 million seven hundred and seventy thousand dollars of that money after paying expenses, they retained seven hundred and sixteen million a hundred and ninety five thousand. That's a profit margin of two point four one percent. So don't get me wrong. The money they made after expenses is a decent amount, seven hundred and sixteen million. But 2.41%, I would say that's pretty low. In other words, you made $29 billion and you only retained $716 million. So it's not that I would say, okay, don't buy this stock, but this is not a plus area 2019 they lost money so i'm not going to count that they made 28 billion 916 million 850 thousand but after paying all expenses they were negative 204 million 87 thousand 2020 that's the COVID year. A lot of companies suffered and lost money that year. But they actually made money. They made $28,673,360,000. Then in 2021, that was a 2.04% profit margin. Now, 2021 and 22, their profit margin increased, but only slightly. They made $34,477,020,000. So they actually increased from the previous three years. They retained one billion one hundred and eight million one hundred and ninety seven thousand. That was a three point two one percent profit margin. So it went up a little. And in twenty twenty two, they increased again. They made thirty seven billion one hundred and twenty four million four hundred and twenty thousand. And they retained one billion four hundred and twenty six million eight hundred and eighty four thousand. That's a three point eight four percent profit margin. Now, so their income statement, like I said, I, the profit margin I don't like. It's pretty low, but they are making money each year. And for their overall sales and revenue. It's been increasing, well, at least since 21, it's been going up. The first few years it was going down, but since 21, 
it's been increasing every year. It's been in the 30 billions. And their profit margins have been increasing as well. Now, let's look at the return on equity. And for their return on equity, and like we say, when the debt to equity is over 200%, the return on equity figure that you're getting is not as reliable. It could be inflated. But in any event, their return on equity is nothing to brag about. It's not great. I consider it decent. 2018, it was 13.32%. 2020, we'll skip in 2019 because it was a negative year. 2020, it was 11.35%. 2021, it was 20.75%. And 2022, it was 25.43%. 2021 and 2022 looks better, but realize what I said, when the debt to equity is over 200, it may be slightly inflated. Maybe it's not, but maybe. Maybe it's slightly inflated. In any event, their debt to equity is 230.79% in 2018, 237.02% in 2019, 231.21% in 2020, 265.78% in 2021, and 287.84% in 2022. And that would give me some concerns about the balance sheet. So let's go down and look at the balance sheet. And you guys could probably see some of the reasons why I rated this company a one star so far. First, we saw a concern with the first we saw a concern with the income statement in that the profit margin was so low two and three percent then we saw a concern with the debt to equity that it was so high now let's look at the balance sheet and don't get me wrong i've seen companies with higher debt to equities but we like to see them under 200%. But if you have banks, hey, wow, they're, they could be pretty high. They could be in that 700% range. In any event, we want to see the current assets exceeding or higher than the current liability, which is exactly what we have for the last five years. It's not doubling it or anything but it's exceeding and we want to see the total assets exceeding the total liabilities which we have for the last five years so the balance sheet is I would say acceptable now This company does not pay a dividend. Let's look at their change in capital stock. In other words, we want to see a company can make money from three ways. Only one way that we as investors like to see. We like to see them making money on the income statement from what they do for a living. We don't want to see them making money by constantly taking more loans. And we don't want to see them making money by constantly selling more stock. We like to see them buying back stock, but we don't like to see them selling more stock. Well, this company bought back stock in those whole five years. 234,486,000 worth in 2018, 
$387,292,000 worth in 2019. Four hundred and sixty two million six hundred and ninety eight thousand worth in twenty twenty eight hundred and sixty four million five hundred and sixty six thousand worth in twenty twenty one and one billion thirty two million a hundred and forty seven thousand worth in twenty twenty two We are gonna skip over change in current and long-term debt because we already addressed that in the balance sheet. But I like to see how much free cash flow the company is making because the free cash flow determines to me, one, if they can afford to pay you that dividend they're giving you and two, if they can afford to increase the dividend. But in this case, this company doesn't give a dividend. So it's not as significant. But I will say their free cash flow was actually negative in 2022. It was negative one hundred and eleven million nine hundred and thirteen thousand. Let's jump down to our statistics. And when we go to our statistics, we see this company has a beta of one point four one. Now, what is beta? Beta tells you how volatile that company is. The stock market itself moves at a beta of about one. That means how much is it going up or down from day to day? It moves at a beta of about one. So, if you have a stock with a beta of let's say 50, that means that that's a stock that moves about half as much as the market. It doesn't move much. If you have a stock that has a beta of about two, that means it's a twice as volatile as the market. It moves a lot more than the market. So a beta of around 1.41, this stock moves more than the market, the S&P 500 itself. It moves more than that. Um, the book value is almost near the stock price at 101.29. The book value is supposed to tell you how much the company can afford to pay you for each of your shares of stock if the company were to suddenly shut down. I really don't find book value as significant. And if you want to know why, I have a video on the channel called The Truth About Book Value. What I more so look at is what I just showed you about whether a company is buying back shares of stock or selling shares. But this company has 54.16 million outstanding shares of stock. And of those 54.16 million, 0.93% are owned by insiders, those involved with or working in the company. And according to Google, according to, to um, Yahoo, I don't know why they do this, but according to Yahoo, 100.65% is owned by institutions. That's large banks and so forth. Now, I'm no math genius, but I took math in school, 
and I really don't understand how you can get over 100%, but according to Yahoo Finance, 100.65% is owned by institutions. I personally like to see stocks that have large institutional ownership because if you have just regular investors, just the regular Joe Schmo who wants to get rich buying stocks, they can buy and sell for any reason. The institutional investors are more professional and they're around for a while. And the one thing that affects a stock's price is when more people are selling it than buying it. If more, if people, more people buy than sell, the price goes up. If more people sell than buy, the price goes down. So we want to see more people buying than selling. And if you're involved in a stock that has those large institutional investors mostly holding on to it, then you don't have to worry about it dropping so easily. In any event, Mr. Sean J. Karens, born 1963, just to give you an idea of his age. Sean J. Karens is the president, CEO, and director. He worked his way up in the company and was appointed CEO in June of 2022. So he's a recent CEO. We're still feeling him out to see what he does. But if you remember, in 2021 and 2022, the, um, the profit margin actually increased. So maybe he's going to be on to some and doing a good job. But we're still watching. It was not as if he's been the CEO for the last five years that we've just analyzed. Just the most recent true, um, too. And Arrow Electronics is in the electronics and computer distribution industry. Arrow is the third largest company in their industry. After TD Cynix, Corp TD Cynix Corporation and Insight Enterprises. So that is our analysis for Arrow Electronics, guys. They're now added to our watch list. So we'll keep a look at them and see when they start to move up on the um on the candlestick charts, and you can see that in uh, the weekly episodes of this week's winning stocks, as well as this week's option picks. Okay, guys, you have a great day. I'll speak to you in the next video.